Greetings, nerds. This is Saint and Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. 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 Like good February, day after Valentine's Day. Um, And you know what? Now, whenever I um, think that yesterday was Valentine's Day and on Valentine's Day, all I could think about was just the poster for Deadpool <laughs> 3. Because yeah. that's genius. I it love was. that so much. And the merch that'll come from that. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the Jesus friendship like... bracelet, bracelet. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he really. That's Deadpool and Wolverine is definitely Marvel, Marvel Jesus because he is the Messiah to help bring back the MCU. <laughs> it was just. It was a really good trailer yeah. teaser, whatever you want to call it. I'm yeah. glad. Like no sh- no scenes between the two of them. Because just you wait, guys. In about six months, you're going to feel like you've seen the movie. And (laughs) that's why I'm like, I don't need more. I didn't need more before, but I'm glad I got this little treat, this little tease. And I'm like, I don't need more. I don't need to know all the scenes that are going to happen. I I don't need to know their banter. Um, But Uh, but yeah, it was it was a good trailer. It was a good trailer, and you're right. I mean, all I know some people were grumbling about, well, you know, why did they show Wolverine in the trailer? I mean, I think the way they ended it with the shadow. I mean, we've all seen this the 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 set photo of them walking together and stuff, so we know he's in the movie. I love the way they did it in this trailer, though, because you know, for the non nerds that are out there who don't follow this stuff like obsessively on Twitter and stuff like that, um. It, it was a nice, it was like a very nice teaser for, for the Joe average fan who's, you know, who probably watched the X-Men films, familiar with Wolverine and all that kind of stuff, but not those folks who like, you know, a- actively seek out set photos and that kind of thing. So, but yeah, I mean, it's called Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, I know. But my point is, yeah, but no, the, the, the seeing him like physically in the trailer, not the, not the fact that the title of the movie was dropped. Um, I'm just right. saying, okay. yeah, it, yeah, it's more of that. Um, Sometimes I feel like you make <laughs> the people who don't follow this stuff seem to be really stupid. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Why it's are not, you it wasn't so much, no, I, no, I'm not talking down or making them <laughs> stupid. I'm just saying that not everybody is obsessive about this stuff as we are. No, no. And I try to get you to not be. <laughs> <laughs> like you're ruining it too much of a good thing but but yeah, yeah. um yeah. i, I did like, yeah yeah it was, yeah, I, it was good I, yeah we got you know more tva seeing I, I, you know i have i did not know that matthew mcfadden was in this movie i did that Thank was you a, for reminding me I, yeah. while i was watching it i was just like i forgot yeah they and thank you t- like that's what a teaser should do like like, yeah, you already know Wolverine's going to be in it. I mean, yeah. look at the title. But but did you forget about this guy who you recently had to bid farewell? And I'm like, no, I did not. <laughs> 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 I I know you, and I'm glad, Tom. Man, if they do something that is a nod to succession, which, fuck, they yes. Got they got it. <laughs> They've got to. <laughs> oh man, um, I my, my I will I will say this one final thought um, before moving on to the next trailer that aired during the Super Bowl is that my one reservation, and I'm just putting this out there now, is that I have seen the other two Deadpool movies. Mm-hmm. The first one I like came too late to the party. I still watched mm. it, had a good time, have never watched it since. Deadpool two went to the theaters. Loved it. Laughed my ass off. Haven't seen it since. Mm -hmm. So there, as much as I enjoy Ryan Reynolds, just being Ryan Reynolds in a Deadpool outfit, as much as I enjoy the fact that him and Hugh Jackman are going to team up, I do not know if, if this franchise like is more of in the moment, I'm just entertained but then after the fact, I'm like, yeah, that happened. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I for for whatever reason, 
as much as in the moment I have a, I'm very happy watching these movies. I never feel the need to go and revisit them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fair. I mean, I, you know, come to think of it, I haven't, I've seen like bits and pieces of them after us mm-hmm. watched them in the theater, but, uh, it, but I'm the same way. I don't think I've ever sat down and watched it start to finish. Right. Uh, since, uh, since the first viewing. Right. Yeah. Which rewatchability is a big factor when it comes yeah. to like things you cherish. Yeah. Um, so th- the the next one is Wicked, mm-hmm. which I, 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 I've never seen the play, any like production of Wicked. I kind of know what it's about. I've heard like the the main big songs um, mm-hmm. from it because of Glee back in the day. But um, so this is fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a good trailer. Yeah. But I have I have some issues about it. <laughs> <laughs> um and, you tell. and my 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 one issue is like it's not really an issue or anything. I'm neutral on this person, but I also know she's kind of been through the ringer this year, but Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> I don't considering the bits and pieces that I've heard about what's been going on with her and her life and her work life and commingling and breakups and divorces and all that. Yeah, um, very interesting that this should come out um, right on the heels of all that. So we could get a redemption story for her, I don't know. And the other thing is, um, who's the actress who plays the main bad witch? Okay, so the three at least are Ariana Grande, uh, Glenda Glendara is uh, Cynthia Erivo. Okay, and then, she, yeah. I, I like couldn't find her name anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> because it kept being advertised as Ariana Grande and Michelle Yeoh. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, I like saw one one scene, and and we're missing like like the co-lead of this whole thing and yeah. and and but so that was that put me a little bit off i have yeah. to say yeah 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 i um i agree i mean i i had the same reaction I, and it was my it, when i first watched the trailer i i had you know i was like hey ariana grande michelle yo and i i blanked on cynthia's name i, I honestly did and, and 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 i know she's been in some pretty I'm trying to remember what where she what other films she's been in. I, but, I uh, don't recognize her name at all. So yeah, I, um, yeah, but I had the kind of the same kind of thing. I, I enjoyed the trailer. I, I haven't like you. I haven't seen the the musical. I've uh, it, it's come through here in Durham multiple times, and each time I just never get on the ball and, and, and get uh, get tickets for it. But uh, but yeah, the trailer looks looks really fun. Of course, they're releasing it at Thanksgiving, so they're definitely trying to get the, the big holiday bump there. And um, it, yeah, it looks it looks like a lot of fun. And, and maybe uh, we'll finally watch the musical before going into the going to see, the, see it in, in the theater. Maybe. Um, I did not see Invincible season two, part two trailer. Yeah, that one dropped today. So um, it um so when is it coming when is it coming back on air yeah so it's coming back on air march 14th okay yep yep so yeah so this one the trailer was nice it was fine uh really you know we get a few glimpses of alan you know so somehow alan's back um and and, and we see the sort of the fallout from what happens with Invincible, you know, when 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 we left the series there, uh, you know, Omni Man got his was you know being taken away, but I don't recall seeing Omni Man in the trailer to come to think of it. But uh, but yeah, it was fine. I think all, all four parts of the um, remaining uh, ep- episodes of season two will will drop on March 14th, and um, and we'll, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it at some point when we, as we, as we juggle, we look at our schedule moving forward. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like Invincible. I mean, I, I, 
it's, I, I, it's not like it's out. Yeah. We have to like drop what we're yeah. currently doing and switch to yeah. it. I completely yeah. agree. I'm already yeah. processing in my mind. We're going to get to it in April. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that today too. <laughs> I yeah. was like, we might like bundle. We may have an animation block bundly, bundled here. Coming, hey, stuff coming up. <laughs> I mean, I missed that trailer, but mm -hmm. about half hour or less before joining this call, I did see, and I watched, uh, I watched kind of funny, watch the X-Men 79 trailer or 97 trailer. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, the team is back. The team, team is back. Is back well, and it yeah. feels good. It feels it good. It does, it does. I think maybe that was kind of what, maybe that's why I just didn't really get moved by Invincible because when I heard that classic X-Men 90s, the X-Men yeah. theme, I yeah. was just like, all right, March 20, get here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, it's nostalgic. Yeah. And um, the little voice in the back of your head that's saying, like, they're going to fuck it up. You're just like, no, no, they're yeah. not. They can't yeah. do this because because there is fear. <laughs> There's so much nostalgic around this franchise if they fuck yeah. that up for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, arguably... I prefer getting this over um, over live action version mm -hmm. of them right now yeah. because I I've would, just yeah. been exhausted. I haven't watched like the last six movies that came out with <laughs> Same. Um, but but <laughs> yeah, it it it's, it'll be good once we uh, yeah. we get around yeah. to talking about it. Yeah, it will be. I, I you know, speaking of nostalgia, I, I know that the. Uh, poster that they dropped for the series um you know it's all the, the characters and it's vhs tapes just to really you know remind you of like the time period that it's you know that, where the original show came and everything about it i mean it, it was you know the original you know the original voice actors who were part of the series are coming back uh most, many of them in the same roles they had before some of them are doing some other characters in in this new show and of course they do have some new people coming in to do some voice work as well for like cyclops and others but yeah i i'm there with you i can't it i, I had a big smile on my face and agree that if you're going to bring the x-men back this is a great way to do it so um next summer we mm -hmm. have thunderbolts <laughs> swapping release dates thunderbolts is now may 2nd 2025 superman legacy I thought we were just talking about two movies, but Will added this third one will be on July 11th and then Fantastic Four will be on the 25th. And now that I've put that on in the universe, more than likely these, at least the Thunderbolts and Fantastic Four will likely move to another date and time. Granted, Fantastic Four is also, the casting has been confirmed which was one of the most anticlimactic pieces of news to come out of this week, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the reason why I put Superman Legacy in there, yes, I know it's DC, but I mean, this super summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a super summer. It is going to be. I mean, and and, and it's really just it's you know you have two quite frankly, two anticipated films within two weeks of each other. I mean, you can't like not. I mean, I think that even I joked about the note about the the release dates moving more likely than not they're they're probably going to stay there and 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 it's pretty amazing that Fe feige and 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 uh you know james gunn have their little uh, will have a have a rivalry starting there and uh and, and given james's prior work with superhero films you know and given the mcu's track record even though max chapman did do did have a role in one division so that's probably the last thing that people really had universal good feelings about um yeah i mean it's just going to be fun to see what happens there um but i agree with you though that fantastic four the, the the casting announcement was anticlimactic but i think with the with the uh promotional materials that that came out yesterday with the uh, poster and stuff i mean maybe it looks like they may be going a little retro so maybe it will maybe it'll be set back in the 60s or something um but we'll see yeah because that worked so well the last time they did that true 
(laughs) They get a a (laughs) do-over. I mean, um, um, so so next year we'll have a super summer. This year we're having a Star Wars summer continuation as the Acolyte is reported to drop this summer on Disney+. Plus. So... Yeah, no date yet, but uh, Collider re- did report that uh, over the weekend. That uh, looks like that series will be will be dropping. It's at 100 years before Phantom Menace, so um, it's in the High Republic. So and it's a mystery thriller. So you know, we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll you know, we uh, we'll get a new genre entered into the uh, Star Wars universe. Yep, um, I've heard that one before, and there's going to be sand. That's my prediction. There's going to well, be. Sand. There's always sand. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just saying a new genre. Is it? Is there sand? Not a new genre. Star Wars. Just continuation, okay? (sighs) I'm waiting for the water planet. No. (laughs) We had that. I know, I know, I know. Um, And then after that, Superman and Lois will return in this fall for the fourth and final season. So that is cool. They're starting to shoot or they have been um, yeah. shooting. Um, so we will get that to end the year. Yeah. Uh, and the, say uh, one, goodbye yeah. to that cast and crew. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying okay. to get through this stuff. Yeah. Just real, real quick. I mean, I know it dropped. I mean, one little note about it. it the show could be ready for the summer, according to the network president. Uh, they, they, but they decided to push it to the fall because they didn't want to waste the. Um, Ways to show in, in in being haven't been dropped in the summer and stuff. So I appreciate them giving the give them a, a nice send off, especially after they cut their budget. <laughs> yeah, um, that is appreciative. And uh, Stephen Amell got cast as lead in Suits spinoff Suits LA. Will correct me if I'm wrong. You you didn't go down the Suits path, did you? I did not. I did not. Even with the revival on Netflix, I haven't gone down it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and we all know my my story. But for those listening who maybe do not, I did watch Suits back in the early days when it was actually airing live. Um, and then I fell off around season six, around season seven. And then during the revival that, that occurred this summer, I actually watched the seasons I didn't hadn't seen. Circled back around and ended up going back through. (laughs) 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 And just like, I skipped episodes that I could care less about, (laughs) but I, (laughs) there were certain ones where I'm like, no. And then I like the storyline and oh yeah, that's so, so the whole thing. My, I, I saw this news and good on him. Suits. It'll be interesting to see because the premise of Suits was essentially that this this guy who um, for for certain reasons got kicked out of law school um, and but was so smart that he started um, the side gig of um, taking the LSTAT for people. And he has one of those memories where if he sees it, he knows it. And it's like stuck in his head, photographic memory. Um, And he somehow um, in the first episode meets Harvey Specter, who's a lawyer in New York City, who's looking to hire an associate. And this guy convinces him to hire him. And so for most majority of the series, there's the secret that this guy has never gone to law school and he doesn't have his credentials to represent people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and, and so, and so what I'm saying is they can't, in my opinion, they can't necessarily take that present, um, premise and just put it in LA. So even though they're calling the suits LA, I am curious about what the premise will be. Yeah. So I did read the deadline article about this when um, putting this on the rundown. And essentially, Stephen Amell's character is a, a lawyer in New York. 
Yeah, uh, hard factor version. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but for I think it was a prosecutor. Yeah, he was a prosecutor in New York, and then he um, ends up uh, moving to the West Coast and setting up a criminal. Uh, I think a criminal and defense and other type of law practice. Um, and so this is this is not a continuation. I think it's just right. a it's a it's a true. Well, oh, there's no way they could yeah. do a continuation. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a you know new show, and even Stephen joked that he's uh, he's got a little bit of experience about building universes. So, <laughs> yeah, I I did one of the actors from the original show. I watched an interview with him this week, and he even said they need their time to develop their story, mm-hmm. and then you bring in characters from the original series. You don't instantly start off with like the tie-ins. So I hope that the writers and producers um, understand that, like, this story needs to be solid. And, of course, then season two, you get Emily Bett walking in as his (laughs) ex-girlfriend, which is actually money on now. That will happen. Okay? And David Ramsey will make an appearance. Yep. (laughs) And, And God help me. Grant Gustin will make an, uh, an appearance. Like, yeah. I, my money is on those three in particular. Yeah, yeah. Let's still wait and see about that one. We'll, we'll uh, whenever we come, whenever the show, because uh, I think it starts production in Vancouver in, next month. And um, so, yeah, when I get around, if it gets approved for a second season, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what if the Arrowverse reunion starts to happen on that show. Right. Right. All right. Will, 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 will. Um, yep. So what did you think about Mr. and Mrs. Smith's second date? John is one horny dude. <laughs> he, he signed up for the sex. But he didn't know that they were going to be together. I know, but he just remember in the first episode, he was like, did you sign up for the relationship or did you sign up for, you know, or for some other reasons? And he, he, it's, it's clear he signed up for the relationship. <laughs> but I don't understand. You, you're saying that they signed up. Not, he, I'm just saying in the program. I mean, just, you know, whatever he learned that, you know, whatever he was going to be a. There was the, the cover was going to be a married couple. But they learned that in the first episode. Hmm? I I, I don't know. I'm sure you're saying what is correct. Um, It's just going over my head. But but yeah, like he. Yeah. I was also not expecting you to lead with that. So I'm like, wow, (laughs) you went right there. Okay. I don't know what to say. I'm very caught off guard. I'm like, okay. Uh, I I, I surprise you every now and then. (laughs) Did you like this episode more or less than the first episode? I, about equal. About equal. I, um, I like this episode. The awkwardness really, you know, you know, you had your first date. I think it was that the tension was, as far as between the two of them, was ramped up. And maybe that's why I just started out there uh, going right to that point. Because that's what, for me, as far as beyond the, the mission aspect of it, all the elements that, that were going on in the episode really just kept heighten, heightening that tension between them, the sexual tension between them. Um, and... And, and so maybe that's and that's part of the reason why I was like, yeah, that's my kind of my nutshell analysis of what I thought John's motivations were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think I like the first episode better. Mm-hmm. This did feel like a continuation. Um, I did laugh out loud during the potential throw up. Oh yeah, I did too. I don't. Yeah. It, it's just the way he did it. Yeah. Um, was so funny to me. I have no idea why I laughed out loud um, seems, about that. Yeah, it seems so natural. I was just wondering, I was like, is this improv or is this like, did he really like, or did they block this out prior to? Because it just seemed like it was, it just seemed very natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I know that they're doing a lot of improv on this. Yeah, yeah. And the um, other thing, too, yeah, another thing too, is just like, I found it funny because 
thinking back to the first episode about the discussions about how many how many people he's killed and 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 something I didn't bring up um earlier when we discussed the first episode his embellishing about his height. So I was like also I was wondering like did he embellish like the number of kills he's had? Oh, I I think so. Yeah. I I also think that he might embellishing as in because he we know he was in Afghanistan, like they dropped yeah. a bomb, like yeah. but it's it, or there was an attack. There's more than one people, but the casualties are this amount. So he mm-hmm. owns all of those. So like like I I I can appreciate how with both of them they say things that but due to their actions and due to everything you learn about them during the interview you're as a viewer also second guessing and saying okay is that the truth or is that a lie Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how much of a lie is it is a white lie or is it like very a very hard paced lie i for me um why I, I honestly prefer the first episode more than this episode is because I really enjoyed um, the, the writing in this episode, for whatever reason, majority of the time, things were just too telegraphed about what was going to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I found myself predicting exactly what was going to happen multiple times. And that's not a good sign for me. Yeah. <laughs> because- <laughs> I should either a be so invested in my mind's not even thinking mm-hmm. um, or b thinking of something. And then they do the opposite. I'm like, Oh, well that was interesting. <laughs> I did yeah. not expect that. Um, but so, so as much as the conversation at the end, like was a good, like bottle, um, story arc with the line about about him saying at the beginning how the idea of having someone to come home to at the end of the, a shitty day and to be able to kiss them like that's a nice thought i can appreciate that but at the same time i'm just like uh it's too telegraphed it's too yeah. like yeah um <clears throat> but to your point their chemistry is great yeah and um, the, both of them separately and alone are really interesting <laughs> characters. Um, but but overall, I don't know. I just, I was not as invested in this whole black tie thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as soon as there was an emphasis, like, do not administer more than one of the truth serum, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you know where that's going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you that things were telegraphed, and so the from the mission standpoint, yeah, the first episode was definitely if yeah if I, if I, if I did have to tip the scales that that would make that what it does, and, I, and I, it, it did the job of being the hook, um, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, I think for me, like I said, I think for me it was more and, and more and as you as you've mentioned it, the whole psychological. Back kit, cat and mouse game warfare between Jane and John, uh, which was, which you know we you know the first date you're just sort of filling each other out. Second date you really get you know it's like getting into learning more about that person and yeah the and, fact that they're into cannibal porn. Yeah, exactly, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're into cannibal <laughs> porn. Yeah, <laughs> that that was good. That was, that was really good. good. Yeah. I also didn't understand what he was watching. I'm going to be very honest here. I, I did not understand. <laughs> so, not, but at the that. end, when it was yeah. explained what it was, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad that she she did that. Um, serves him right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. Uh, that I think the, the – she is – what I also got her is she's so much better at this than he is as far as like the the head fakes because he walks into them at least between their at least right now in their di- relationship dynamic he walks into it every single time you know from well, you know like, why that is yeah do you uh no explain it to me 
Well, <laughs> you kind of said it at the very beginning of this conversation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he, he underestimates her because she's a woman and he wants to fuck her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he, she's able to do that and pull it off in such a way because he's a man who wants to get laid. Yeah. He yep. has yet to really like view it as something else. But at the same time, I I can't help but think about the coffee shop scene in the first episode. And Donald Glover is doing a great job with this character because they they both are. But for him during that scene and trying to break the ice and trying to get to understand her. There were so many tells from me where it's like, no, he's, he's like, he's a very curious yeah. naturally about who this person is that he's yeah. now married to. But also I think he's, he's very observant of her and what she's doing. And she, he figured out who Max is Yep. So, so I feel like she's also someone that he's viewing as like a puzzle. It's like, I'm going to put you together. Yeah. I'm going to figure you out. I don't care how many landmines I have to step on, but I will figure you out because you're just this big mystery. Yeah. 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 And I think, yeah, that's for me why I think I, I really like this second episode, not because of the mission, because you're right. The mission was so totally telegraphed as soon as we got the, you know, the, the message that you know, make sure you don't give them two boob doses. Then I was like, well, you know, I mean, we know if things are going to go wrong. So, but the, the as as you noted, the him putting the, the pieces of the puzzle together, mm-hmm. and and you know where she, you know, but and I and you know come to think of it, I mean, yes, she's good at it uh, as far as the head fakes and stuff. I mean, she did get him back with the with the um, snooping. But uh, but you know he he also caught her red-handed um, when she was going through his things. Um, oh yeah, that was yeah. that was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, what you like? She's they're both e- evening the playing field, yeah, and yeah. they're both as soon as you think one is stronger in an area, another one does something. I will have to side with Jane though that when I was watching the scene. The way I interpreted what John did was the go ahead for her to administer the dose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, but, I still look back at that scene. It's like, how did you think that was saying I'm gonna do it? I'm like, yeah, but what? that's that's what the show is so great about, dude. That, I mean, that's what happens with relationships when people are trying to figure out like cues. And I mean, even now with my wife and I, we we have those moments where I was like, well. I thought you meant this, or she thought, you know, and it's usually, you know, it's always the guy's fault. <laughs> she's all, you know, she, yeah, I mean, she's right. On. But when you watch, you watch the same scene that I did. What, what did you think? Who did you think was going to administer it? I, it was my understanding that she was was supposed to be the one to do it. Thank you. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that was my understanding of it. And then he messed it up because guys always do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but I also want to point out, I think from a writing span um writing um perspective, it is intentional that the viewer thinks that it's Jane who's supposed to do it because they show they actually show her try to put putting the dose on yep. her leg. Like yep. So, so in a viewer, you're like, oh, she has a dose, so she's going to administer it. He's going to be the distraction. You yep. forget that there's another dose that he may have. So mm-hmm. I'm just, I feel like they, they did that purposely. Yeah, um, they did. But, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, they set it up purposely, but, but I think, as we were just talking about, though, it's the larger, and it's why it's like the second date and why the show, you know, the relationship and the chemistry and everything between the two actors and the characters is so critical because, I mean, that was a very believable thing that that happens with with couples in that situation. Um, I remember, you know, it's just like you know, we're making double booking something on a weekend you know, with saying, well, you know, we have, pl- you know, we have dinner plans with friends this weekend. 
versus next weekend and and how people interpret this weekend versus next weekend it was very this is a very smartly written show um as far as when it gets into those dynamics yeah i i don't yeah. i mean as far as a couple of dynamics i mean the other stuff i completely agree with you the the mission stuff was telegraphed um paul dano showing up and being the flirty nosy neighbor <laughs> i uh, like that scene oh, got um, it too. because uh, to me, his flirtiness was the pol- polar off the set of John's, mm-hmm. where he very much, much more um, why she's interested in him or says, like, he's kind of hot is because she sees herself in him yeah. um, with the awkwardness and the questions and them trying. Like, they played their own game of chess mm-hmm. and they were both very fascinated by each other so so i really like that and i like it even more because john's like on the inside peeping through the windows like what the fuck is happening here like like i don't know this woman but technically she's mine so i don't like it i don't appreciate it so i i i really i like that and i wasn't i what i was trying to say is not that i disagree that this isn't um a well-written show is that i i question like how much of it is the writing versus the actor chemistry Mm. Uh, because we also know that they're they're doing improv for a lot of the scenes so yeah so there's a balance there between um what carries more weight in terms of this show and we're only on episode two so who yeah. knows what will happen in the next six episodes? Yep, yep, for sure. For um, sure. And next week we get to talk about two of them, and that will be a, a true test because, like, so far we've only got them in very s- small doses. And next week it'll be two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so the true serum will come out. <laughs> oh my god, I, I, I love John Toretto, but I, I don't want to see him for at least a few months. <laughs> After yeah, yeah. That. I don't <laughs> we'll, that scene. we definitely won't yeah. i was very uncomfortable um yeah, yeah. that moves us on to reacher episode six new york's finest <laughs> oh <laughs> god okay uh, yeah. so so what this is why we can't have nice things on reacher because the moment that i say i like a character it's just like the writers hear me and say, okay, that character has to go. Like, yeah. Gus dies. And I don't appreciate it, especially because it's not Reacher who's like, we'll get your vengeance. Or looking down on him and, like, them having their male bonding moment as his send-off. is like, I know you're a good cop. No, it's Niggly. And I'm like, it should have been Reacher. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. understand that decision at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. Yeah. And also the death just felt, it just felt unearned. I mean, it was just so cliched. It was so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say this right now. Every single, and this goes for Mr. and Mrs. Smith too, because I checked out of the whole car race trying to get him back to their apartment or mm-hmm. thing. I checked yeah. out of the episode. Like Reacher so far, anytime they're in a fight scene, I'm like, all right, let me get up and go stretch my legs. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. Um, just because the so far, there's nothing I don't I don't have expectations that they're gonna do anything really interesting with the action sequences, and they're just so predictable. And to to your point, it's just overwhelming. It's like yeah yeah this was set up from the beginning but yeah, yeah. it yeah. just yeah but it, it was yeah yeah i mean like you said i mean that should have been reacher there i mean even because at least that w- it would have felt earned a little bit no a little bit it still would have been yeah it, there would have been a little bit more earnest there with it if it had been reacher especially given their back and forth and you know and you know how they set yeah you know, Katana up as far as from the beginning of possibly is this guy shady? Is he is he the bad is he the dirty cop here? Um and and the sort of the arc of his relationship and and you know and, and what happened we you know the things we found out in this episode. Um 
where it was actually his supervisor who was a dirty cop. And, you know, honestly, I thought I, I didn't expect him to make it out of the, out of the, the room when he confronted the lieutenant. <laughs> I, I thought that was when he was going to get killed. Right. Because uh, he because he, he knew too much. So I will have to give them I have to give them credit that they did not do that trope. But uh, they just did it the other one when he saved the girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they find Marlo and then they have to now protect Marlo and her daughter from Langston um and that's how they also get in the situation where Dixon and O'Donnell are captured by Langston and his men which leads us to the penultimate episode. But it just I feel as though there was so much back and forth between Reacher and Gus that for for that death to be worthwhile and for it to make sense why this would add extra motivation for Reacher to follow through on killing Langston and dropping him from a helicopter, he, like, he would have this moment of, Langston! <laughs> <laughs> or, Gus, I'll miss you! You're a good cop! Like, like that's that was a whole thing between him. As like, I think you're a bit shady. No, I'm a good cop, and here's why. And I'm not like these others. Um, and and the whole lieutenant thing of it all, it's just another person, quote unquote, bad guy. I'm not even gonna call these people shady cops. No, 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 no. Langston and his his cronies are the shady cops. These other peoples are just the stupidest people on the planet and how they're in these positions of power is beyond me because they can cons- consistently say, oh my God, oh my God, if you get if you get an offer from Langston, it, it's not a bribe, but you just, you have to take it. You have yeah. to take it. Like, you don't understand, guys. Like, I had to. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, you didn't. You should, oh yeah. My- just, yeah, it's just a, just, such a just, cliche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like thing. Yeah, just pieces of logic just sort of fall falter there. Um, w- with as, as you rightly pointed out. Yeah. I mean, not. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I mean, maybe. I mean, I think they've tried to set it up, but it still just it just feels very paper thin. So it just yes. doesn't. Yes, but I think that's that. To me, that's where it just where it lags. Uh, it maybe in the, in the it, kite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I just say that because we were talking last week about the flashbacks. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, I'm like, okay, so where are we going with these flashbacks? Why aren't we seeing more of Swan? We didn't get any Swan in no. these, these two episodes. But again, it boggles my mind. Because a part of me the entire time is just like, so so Swan's still alive? Like, so what? why isn't anyone questioning where Swan is? Like, I don't understand this. And and yet in these two episodes, we learn we get the flashbacks have also been greatly reduced, mm-hmm. or like reduced in a way, or a bit too much in the sixth episode, where we just learn that there are politics at play that prov- that the the generals don't want um, the hundred and tenth to finish this kite runner assignment, and of course, Reacher says "fuck you," and and they end up going through with it and don't care that well now they're disbanded. They're like, mm-hmm. well, we figured. Um, so the joke's on you, buddy. But and then and then you you get a little bit of a payoff when Nigley and, and Reacher have their conversation right before he goes in to turn himself into Langston, where he's or gives himself up to Langston, where where she she says, like, oh man, I've been thinking about Kite Runner. We yep. uh we we totally purposely killed our unit, and now someone is literally killing our unit. And I'm like that was the parallel this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We'll explain that it. Didn't, yeah, that didn't bother me. That didn't bother me so much. I I, I will say that. I was like, okay. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll allow it. <laughs> 
I like the line, but yeah. I just can't believe. I just if you're gonna have flashbacks, yeah. they they need to stand so much more on their own, like yeah. than what we got. And they were so choppy. And then again, I'm just gonna say there was there was ample time for us as a viewer to get to know Swan in the flashbacks because in present day, mm -hmm. we are supposed to leave without a doubt in our minds, he's dead, just like Reacher yeah. thinks he is. And it's like, no, 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 he's alive. We're going to see him in the eighth episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll find out but, he's the mastermind behind it all. <laughs> or, or, you know, that would be awesome. I mean, yeah. I, I would love for this show in its final hour to surprise the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. I would love it. I'm, I'm actually hoping for it. Do yeah. I actually think it'll happen? Not a chance. <laughs> yeah, we'll just get yeah, we'll we'll just get Reacher tortured, you know, and um, he will make some witty comment or whatever. He'll you know, up, up, you know, we'll get out of the get out of the sh shackles or whatever, and you know, toss Langston from a helicopter for me. So. <laughs> I mean, I will be honest. I really am only in it to see Langston getting tossed from a helicopter. Okay. <laughs> Like, let's do this. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. and, and that's another thing. We hardly got any AM. I know. Any yeah. AM. We and he's such a better villain than Langston. And yet all the, all we're talking about and all we're seeing is Langston and Reacher. And I'm like, man, remember when I thought it would be awesome the moment that Reacher meets Sam? Now, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It, well, he, yeah. I'm sure it will. But sure, yeah, it'll, that'll, that'll, that'll show up while they're, like, beating him with the lead pipe, you know, yeah. whenever he's get, whenever they're trying to get information out of him or, or whatever, they, whatever at this point, try, you know, however they try to break him or whatever, literally. Literally, <laughs> they're literally trying to kill a reacher. Uh, yeah. Figuratively, they didn't pass. Yeah. Anything else you you want to say about the penultimate episode? I was kind of surprised by it because yeah. it was this big build up, and yeah. then we got the montage at the end, let the man walk through, and yeah. then it's like fade black. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, I. Yeah, actually, I was gonna. I mean, I, I do like the. I do ha appreciate how they score this show. I mean, the the mu the music definitely like. Fair. Uh, yeah. Um, sets the you know fits the mood of the scene and stuff. Um, as far as the penultimate episode, I mean, it was a lot of just you know to your point about uh, flashbacks and stuff. I mean, it, I felt like it was. Um. You know, we did get a little bit more as far as the the politics, as far as you know, what was going on with kite uh, kite runner. Um, you know, you know, we get to see Neagley do a lot of badass stuff. You know, in the hospital there, whenever they were like talking to the guy who survived the uh, incident, the the um, getting hit by the car when he saved the girl. But um, yeah, I mean, it really. It, it, I just felt like the really there was I felt like it was building up and really in those last maybe ten minutes or whatever and, and then we when we do fade to black I was just like oh now you know I, I I was like they did a good job of setting up the 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 finale in those last few minutes because the rest of the episode I mean it was it was good but uh, I, um, but I felt like the the ending of it really set things up pretty well yeah. Yeah, I've seen worse penultimates, and I'm glad yeah. we watched these two episodes back to back because yeah. they kind of flow right into each other. Yeah. Um, which I could say arguably about this entire season, the way yeah. we, um, we broke it up makes yeah. a lot of sense with in terms of arcs. Yeah. And and everything. So so we, and we're just gonna we're gonna have one more episode to talk about next week. Um, to end our Reacher discussion, Reacher season two discussion, then who yeah. knows? Season three, they've already been green lit, green lit for it. And, yep, yeah, he's and filming you know, it. Yeah. We, we might end up watching that too, now that we're on the train. Um, <laughs> so, so 
beyond this, I had a big, big weekend of watching things, Will. Oh, I just have detail. To talk to you about. Detail, um, detail. So I, I find it so funny in hindsight that after record the recorded last week, I told you, I mentioned this offhandedly, and I just said, yeah, I, I saw One Day came out on Netflix. I'm probably not going to binge it. I'll probably, like, take my time with it. And um, I, I binged it. I binged it. Um, <laughs> I was, but I did not know at the time mm. i knew there was i knew there was 14 episodes mm. um and but i did not know at the time that those episodes are a half hour long oh well, there you go <laughs> and one of them is 18 minutes long wow and um so for those who don't know about this limited series it's based off of a book by david nichols that was released in late 20 2010 maybe 2011 um and they made a movie starring Anne Hathaway shortly after it because it was a big YA novel um I read the book I was obsessed with the book um I mainly read it because I knew they were making it into a movie mm -hmm. I watched the movie very disappointed by the movie and I literally have not thought about this story since then and this all occurred again mind you 10 plus years ago <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i had no idea they were making a limited series um until i saw it like as a recommended and that it, it was dropping and i'm like oh okay interesting mm. i i okay i'll i'll check it out and on friday i just threw on the first episode i was like you know i just need something to listen to in the background yeah. It was it was good because I had this experience with the show of where I have not thought about the story in so long mm -hmm. yet while watching it. This is what tells you how good of an a how good of an adaptation it was, but b how obsessed with this story I was when I first read it. Huh. There were lines where I was like, oh, she's going to say this now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I remember it was like this weird and even and you know I said I said I was disappointed by the movie I don't mm -hmm. think it was cast right mm -hmm. and the show proves where the casting went wrong mm -hmm. with the movie because Leo Woodall I don't know how to pronounce his last name I'm sorry I'm blanking I just know his first name is Leo he is Dex and oh. it's just it was he his performance was so good um and will 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 yeah, you yeah. don't understand because i knew what would happen i knew what was gonna happen <laughs> i've read the book yeah, i've yeah. seen the movie yeah yeah i cried oh oh I, my oh oh shit i'm about to fall out of, I'm, I'm, well, I'm about to fall out of my chair i know i know and now while i was thinking about this i'm like Man, do I tell Will or do I continue this illusion that I have no heart? Um, I surprised <laughs> and I don't, I didn't, I'm not going to say why I cried, but okay. I will say I didn't cry. I cried in the last episode. Mm. So, so there's, and it's, and it's just, so, so all that being said like it was this just this experience mm -hmm. of watching now, the story that i yeah. love so much be really brought to life mm -hmm. and executed because the story is essentially these two people meet um during graduation of college okay, okay. um and and they have this night together, and that's the first episode, this first night. And then the um, the next episode is exactly one year later to the day, mm. because the book is written in that way. Okay. Each chapter takes place on July fifteenth, from nineteen eighty eight to about two thousand five. Oh, oh. And okay. it fall and and. This is this is another reason why I love the way this this story is told is because 
you're constantly like wherever the characters are, whether they're apart or together, Mm -hmm. you're following what happens on that day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you hear about things that occurred in between, which proves that it's a lived in world and lives do go on. But like, we're just focused on this one day and that's what it's called one day. So Ah, yeah. Yeah. It all makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, so getting back, cause I'm just, I'm still, my jaw is still on the floor, uh, from you admitting to me that, uh, you, 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 you actually had an emotional response, uh, that wasn't oh, there were tears. <laughs> yeah. So did you, was it a moment that you remember reading in a book that also hit you that way or? No, no okay. I don't remember crying at all during the book. Okay. Okay. Mm-mm. And, yeah, and I, want I, you, I don't want you to you, spoil. I can tell you um, what it was. And for people who don't want to be spoiled, um, okay. I would tune out. Okay. Um, but so what, ha- w- w- what do you think happens <laughs> based on what I told you already? Um, so given the timeline of events, something either, either someone passed away yeah. Um, and it was a very tr- sad. It was very tragic because these are, you know, still relatively young people. Well, no. <laughs> okay. Kinda, kinda, no. Um, so they they don't get together until officially until 1998. Okay. 19. Um. 90. So they have to like 10 plus years of friendship before okay. they actually get together. Whole time smitten with each other. Like okay. the energy there. But they're best friends. Right, um right. and and they finally get together and then in the second to last episode you we start to do like the same day in 2000. Oh, they're getting married. 2001. Oh, they're married. 2002 they're looking at houses things are finally right with them yeah and yeah. they're enjoying their, and they're in love and they want to have a kid and then the day happens and um she, she the girl emma dies in a car accident oh um yeah. i didn't cry at that part no right, right. yeah <laughs> because that happens in the second to last episode the last episode is um takes you through that day which is the same day that they met coincidence i know i know um but but um i cried watching leo play dex during his grieving process Mm. and the they follow i want to say three anniversaries of the death and the first one uh, mm. very very bad second yeah. one all right third one he finally comes to understanding but it was it was really hard to watch the first right. anniversary death um just because rewind at the beginning he goes through this whole experience of losing his mom to cancer mm. so i just i i think it's it's not like I said, I didn't cry in the book. I don't remember reading the book and crying my eyes out. I there's something about the way this actor played Dex mm-hmm. throughout the entire series that it it just broke my heart yeah. for him to finally get back on his feet because there's some other shit that happens. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then have this person be taken away from him. Mm, yeah. Yes. And yeah. To start to slip again, yeah. but try to figure out a way without her to regroup. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that, I mean, that, that just sounds like a, if, if you got emotionally invested, I mean, uh, and, and you truly got invested in that character and his story. And I mean, uh, and that's, that's, well, I mean that's just phenomenal and 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 acting there. Uh, 
by this actor and, and and really the way they structured the story and like you said if they followed it true to the to the books that you read um even though you didn't have that reaction um when you read the book but at least seeing it adapted um and and and, and all um yeah that's that's, a, that's just powerful so powerful stuff there yeah it, it was really good and that was just yeah. one of the things i watched this weekend <laughs> <laughs> well after that you, you had enough bandwidth to... <laughs> no no yeah. i finished i finished that um okay. before before the super bowl on sunday okay okay, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> i i started a new k drama called um a killer paradox Oh yeah, yes, yeah. I remember you telling me about that one. Yeah, yeah, I, I told you about this one. I'm halfway through the eight episodes. I really am taking this one slow, one episode a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and this show is the best edited K drama I've seen. Huh. And I'm very, I'm gonna put emphasis on the word edited huh. because. The first episode is just a mind fuck <laughs> where you're, <laughs> I was watching and I'm like, what, wait, what, what is going on here? It's mm. just, they, they, they start you and, and in retrospect, it makes sense because you're, there's, there's moments where you're watching something play out and then you don't even realize that something switches and suddenly it's from the perspective of the main character's like his mind, his imagination almost, mm-hmm. um, where some absurd stuff can happen, and 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 but the the editing and how it's just it, it's so well crafted, mm-hmm. um, and so I was I was like oh this is fascinating. Second episode, I'm watching and I'm just thinking to myself. What is with all of these coincidences? Huh. Like, like this is weird. And then the third episode, of the, the, it's just, it's really good. And I'm trying to figure out how much do I share about this show? Because it is, in my opinion, it's something, you, the less you know, the better. Okay. Because it's, to me, I went in, I only knew about the show because I recognized the main actor from Parasite and right, some right. other things. Um, but he isn't even my favorite character. My huh. favorite character is the detective. Detective huh. is awesome. And I mean, he kind of got screwed over recently, but but we'll see what happens. But they are doing the things in the show. They want they took it to a place. A very quote unquote nerdy place huh. that I was not expecting. But I'm like, that is kind of really genius. Hmm. And I'm curious about how this unfolds. But um while you're watching it, I kept while I was watching it, I kept thinking it like this is called a killer paradox for a reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't realize while you're watching it like what is actually happening. Mm-hmm. Um but so far I've I've really enjoyed it. Cool. It's very different. Um but but I I have half I I I'm I found it odd that it they dropped all eight episodes at once. Mm-hmm. The only other time I've seen them do that is with the glory. So mm. that tells me there's a high chance part two will come out like in six months or something. Okay. Um. So this is only half of the first season, uh, but okay. they do they did that with a different show too. I didn't watch that show, but I know they did. Um. So which which is a different release schedule than this other drama I'm watching, Doctor Slump, which is two episodes a week. Mm-hmm. So it's marry my husband. Um, but yeah, 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 how's, yeah, how's Mary, my husband going? (sighs) I'm so done with that show. I'm so done. I'm going to watch the final two episodes, but I fast forwarded through a shit ton this past Mm -hmm. week because I just see where it's going. And honestly, the, it's not, it's not working anymore Mm -hmm. for me. Um, I, I figured out something 
that took the main character the entire episode to realize. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't be smarter than you. Um, how can you be so stupid? So I just, I, again, it's one of the, the shows where it starts off really strong, mm -hmm. but after some of the intrigue is lost, and they introduce some other characters that kind of just go, it, it eats itself in my opinion. So uh, okay. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Which, which, you know, it, it happens, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad I watched it. Yeah. I'm not mad at it from that sense, but, and it could still surprise me. It could still f finish off really strong in the last two episodes because. Yeah. Series um, can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I will again, bring up this show from last year, Duna, which I honestly, it was a lot for me to get through that show. But the last episode and the way they ended it, I was like, this show's genius. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> really I good. remember. Yep. yep. Really good. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. It's just been a lot of, of TV I'm pulling my attention. I always enjoy hearing your K-drama recommendations and also the, you know, various things that show up on your netflix suggested and and one day is definitely yeah i know uh, i know um i was saw someone asking on twitter today if you if, if um anyone's watched one day and i like you know tagged you tagged you on that post because uh i knew i remember you mentioning it last week so yep yeah yep. and and i think i just i just want to say I send a lot of love to Leo, but Leo's performance would not have worked without Mbaka. So Mbaka. So like hats off to her performance as well. So it's Dex and Emma. It's not just Dex. Okay. I'm just gonna say that. Um yeah. and on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And be sure to check out my latest Star Trek video I dropped uh, earlier today. Uh, it's breaking down the series uh, Star Trek Next Generation documentary, Chaos on the Bridge. So it's a crazy first year, first two years of that series. And you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.scenenerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>